Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and sometimes I feel like just completely kind of overhauling a photo, making it fairly significantly even different than it started out. Today's one of those times. Let's get going. This is a street scene from the lovely, lovely, just beautiful town of Dublin, Ireland. Man, I want to go back, but uh, this was shot years ago. Wide angle lens, fairly close as you can see. What happens often with that is the buildings look like they're leaning back. So I'm going to start by working on correcting the verticals. But if you take a look at it, that's too much. And so that's where these bottom tools come in really handy because I can lean these back a little bit, kind of fix that. But if you notice, that top is still not really uh, fitting into the frame. So I'm going to take the aspect ratio and drag it kind of to the left. Well, not kind of. I am going to drag it to the left. And if you look there, I'm kind of stretching that photo out. And now it fits. And... I just think that looks fantastic. I mean, those buildings are straight. I got that very tip top corner, barely, barely got it, but I got it in. And I took a photo that I kind of saved, for lack of a better word, uh, from years ago and was able to turn, um, turn it into something that's workable. So now I got plenty more to do, but I was just really happy that I was able to go from that. And there were a few spots. I took those out before the video, but with Composition AI, I went from that to that, which I just think it looks worlds better. So the next thing I want to do is go get a new sky. I'm going to select my own sky, and by my own, I actually mean my friend Matt Seuss's. Um, I've got a video about his sky pack. I'll put a link down below if you want to purchase that sky pack. It's a, it's a massive pack. It's like 400 skies. There's a few different packs. Anyway, it's all on his website at the link below. I'm going to choose this one and click open and go ahead and stick that on the photo. And already, that's just really enhanced the mood. I'm liking that quite a bit. I am going to pull the horizon position a little bit. Um, I'm going to get a little bit more of that blue in there, like that. So if I show you the before and after, there it is before and there it is current state. I think that looks fantastic. Now, I've got a lot of work to do still, but I mean, I've come so far with two moves, just changing the composition, straightening the verticals, that sort of thing, and then new sky. I went from that to that, so I'm really liking what I got. Now I'm gonna start in light, and I gotta look at my notes. I'm gonna go to 6650 or so, something like that. I think that looks good. And I'm gonna pull the tint up to about a 13. I just do that a lot. And one of the things to keep in mind when you have a new sky, uh, which uh, if the conditions are completely different from when you shot it and what the sky looks like, in other words, it was shot in a gray overcast day and yet I'm putting in a sunset sky. One of the key things to think about is how do you get that light to balance? So I'm playing with the temperature and tint a little bit, which is gonna help me with that. I'm gonna add some contrast. Um, it's getting a little bit dark, but we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna take the highlights down. I pull them down 100. So if you look at the before, there you go. It's a little bit of a halo around the edges, pulling down those highlights, uh, edges of where the sky has been added. Pulling that down helps. I've got another move that will help you with that here in a few minutes. But I'm gonna bump the shadows up about a 12 or so. And I'm gonna go into black and whites as well. I'm gonna take the whites up. I'm gonna go at about a 50 there. And I'm gonna lift the blacks about a 15. So light uh, made quite a few differences in the photo. I think that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy about it. And now I'm gonna pop into Enhance AI and I'm gonna do about a 35 on Accent AI and I'm gonna do like a 22 or so on this Sky Enhancer. So this is a fairly big move in terms of the light, but there it is before and there it is current state that's really brightened up the foreground, which is what Accent AI is so great at doing when you have a darker photo. I love to do that, it just kind of pops the, uh, the shot. Structure is going to go up a little bit, uh, you know, let's call it a 24, and I'm going to paint it in. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger because I'm going to cover broad strokes here, and you can kind of see where I'm going. I think something like that looks good. I'm kind of skipping that left edge and that right edge. I don't really care. I don't need to bring up structure over there, but I think adding it where I did add it really pops. I love that cobblestone street. It gives you a little bit better visibility, a little bit of crunch, and the buildings, of course, have some nice texture. I wanted to bring that up. Color, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to give it a kick of vibrance of about a 12. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into HSL and the saturation of the red. I'm going to bring that down about a 15 or so, simply because this brick building here above that bar, which is awesome, I've been in it. Um, it was just a little too red. So before, it's a little bit more vibrant red, and after, it's a little bit tamer. It's fairly subtle, but with uh, all the moves I end up making, that red was getting a little bit crazy. So what really happened in my workflow was I made all these rest of these adjustments, and I came back later and adjusted that red downward. But I wanted to do it while I was on the tool. And now I'm going to go into landscape, grab golden hour, and give that about a 30. I love applying golden hour to 
really <laughs> like every photo really but sunsets in particular because it just really does make those things kind of pop it really just it's just a warm sunlight kind of yummy kind of light filter so there's the before and there's the current state and also that's part of what popped that red so the fact that i took it down a moment ago kept it from getting a little too over the top having added it here with golden hour okay now i'm down in the creative tab and i'm going to toning i'm going to start with highlights and my saturation level is about a 30 so let me get to about a 30 and my hue is a 310 so i'm kind of over here in the reddish kind of uh, realm and that's because i'm trying to get more of that kind of sunset color into more parts of the photo and after i've done highlights i'm going to do shadows which is like a 12 here and i tend to go a little bluer in shadows a lot of the time so i'm going to do about a 235. okay so if i turn that off there it is before and there it is after. I think that highlight tone kind of gave it a nice little, uh, more of a sunset feel. Again, the way I'm thinking about it is, does the fact that this is a sunset match what the street look like? And in the beginning, of course, it didn't because there was no sunlight on it. It was a gray overcast day. So in other words, I'm trying to get the picture to go together. I'm trying to sell the idea of this being a sunset in Dublin, even though I'm a fan of admitting that I replaced the sky in post. This is something that I prefer to do. But uh, regardless, I still want to make it look like it actually kind of happened together. Okay, next up is Mystical, and I'm going to do about a 30 here. I just love how it adds a little bit of shadow, but I feel like a, a photo like this, I want to get a little bit more light, so I'm going to actually pull the shadow slider up a little bit, and I'm going to give it a little bit of warmth as well. And I love how it, the Mystical tool creates a little bit of that romantic lighting, but I, I do feel like i got to be careful with shadows because I don't want it to be too dark in the foreground. So if I turn this off before, you can kind of see how the photo looked. And then after, just a little bit of mood, a little bit of shadow, but I brought back some of that by lifting that shadow slider just to keep it from being too dark. And now I'm gonna pop over here to Super Contrast. And this is where I was looking at, uh, there's, a, like I said, a little bit of almost of a halo of that new sky around those edges. And so what I did is I came in here with a highlight contrast of about a 50 and then a balance of about 40. So if I show you that before and after, if you look at the before, to me, there's a, a little bit of a halo kind of around the edges of the building. And then after, I feel like that's tamed that a bit. Now it's maybe not perfect and that's okay. You know, there is a fair amount of contrast between the two. Uh, so it doesn't bother me as much as it was. It, again, it's not perfect, but I think it's an improvement. So there it is before and after. That super contrast in the highlights does help quite a bit if you have a halo. And I'm going to wrap this up with a local mask. And it's, of course, going to be a basic local mask. And the thing is, uh, even though local masking is designed to be, you know, a local mask, which means adjust part of the photo and go mask it in, I'm actually going to use this as a global adjustment. So I'm going to bump the exposure uh, to about a 0.6. I felt like it was getting a little bit too dark, so I wanted to do that. I want to pull those highlights down a little bit. So like a negative 30, I think that helps a little bit. And believe it or not, um, the saturation and the vibrance are pretty high. So I'm going to pull those down like a 10, 12, something like that. I don't want to overdo the color as much as I like it. But sometimes I use a basic local mask as a finishing global adjustment, even though it's designed to be used masked in selectively, hence the term local. In this case, I wanted to adjust the entire photo. And these are sliders that are like on the light tool and the color tool, both of which I've already used, so I can't really go back and do that. So there's the before and there's the after. I just think it made a nice final touch on the photo. So speaking of final touches, if you wanna look at the before and after, we started with this way too far leaning back, kind of bland sky from a lack of sunset, and I turned it into something much more colorful. The only thing I might do is go back and play a little bit with some of the vertical adjustment. I, I'm not sure it's, if it's exactly how I want it to be, and I might actually go in and further adjust the aspect ratio, maybe a little bit more like that. Again, it's just something that you can play with, but it's a powerful tool, super helpful, because this is a photo that Honestly, like when it looked like that, you know, years ago, I'd shoot with that wide angle lens all the time and I never even thought about verticals. But over the last couple of years, I've thought about them more and more because you could correct them in Luminar 3, I think, and Luminar 4 for sure. But with the automatic correction here in Composition AI, there's like not really an excuse not to do it. Sometimes it maybe for artistic purposes, you choose to let it stay or something, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, of course. I've just gotten to where I've got a more critical eye of my own photos and I notice it more. Um, partly because I'm aware of it because of Composition AI, but also I'm also aware of the fact that I have a tendency to shoot with a wide angle lens and in cities, you may not be able to back up enough and things just look like they're leaning back. So you get shots like this a whole lot. 
I like them a whole lot better when they look a bit straighter. And that's how I did this one. This was basically a total overhaul in Luminar AI. It was easy, it was fun, it was quick. It's just, it's just fun. Did I say fun? It's fun. Anyway, that's it for this one, my friends. Just wanted to walk through this. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it. Take care of yourselves, have fun editing, and I'll see you in the next video, my friends. Take care and adios.